Beautiful. And uh, when Bizet wrote it, my uh, uh, dummy's guide says, I have the dummy's guide to opera, <laughs> which I <laughs> always read, <laughs> and that uh, Bizet, it was a big flop when he first wrote the opera. Nobody cared, big flop, he died three months later, and now, of course, it's one of the most famous. Yes, mm. and for a reason. You know, for people a reason. People just realize that there's something in that opera that they can identify with. How did you meet your husband, Peter? He's a, an <laughs> Australian. Uh, is he a musician? He he's is, a filmmaker. He's a filmmaker and he's a viola player. And um, we met uh, at a party that, that, uh, for, that Marilyn Horn uh, threw for the Music Academy of the West. And um, we're just there, both of us out of uh, relationships at the moment, at that moment. And we just met and hit it off. And he's a wonderful man. Would you like to be in a, one of his films? Have you ever thought about it? Does um, he make films? He makes, uh, at the moment, a lot of uh, commercials uh, for for mm. businesses, and okay. I, I am he can he films me as much as he can because right. he wants to make a documentary. Really? Yes. How great! Yes. Well, and and if he put you in a Pampers commercial or something, he'd have to pay. <laughs> exactly. Right? You have an agent <laughs> after all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there? A, do you have a dream role? Is there one uh, after Carmen? I must say that Carmen is one pretty, you pretty much a dream role for mm -hmm. me at the moment. Of course, there are other roles that I would love to, to touch, but, um, you know, it goes by, um, by uh, the, the kind of the voice that the one has, and, and I'm just, I'm happy to develop into things that, you know, come my way. Mm -hmm. I can't say, oh, I want to do this and that. It just kind of comes to me, and I'm happy. Well, you certainly are a good blogger. Oh. I love your blog. Thank the you. The story about your, you hurt your shoulder. Yes, back. I think it was last year, right? Because you're carrying this big, heavy score around and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> going. Everyone who's not in the business, not everyone, but most, think it's so glamorous. And you who are in the business know about the travel and the, the loneliness, the loneliness, the baggage, the security mm -hmm. check at the airport, the being late, the the, the, the colds, the disease, the. Mm. You know, what not. There's a lot of um, agony that comes along with, with the glamour. The vocal cords, keeping the vocal cords uh, perfect because it's your instrument. Yes, and it never can be perfect. You have to kind of deal with, with having, you know, 75% mm. out of 100 always, and you have to know what to do with it and how to deal with it and deliver the goods. How do you prepare before a performance? Some singers I know, some opera singers I know, have a routine. Uh, Ms. Stillwell, Jean Stillwell, she doesn't talk the day of the performance. She doesn't speak, and she's yeah. yappy. But she's, <laughs> you know, she says, I'm performing tonight, so she doesn't speak. Yeah, I'm not that radical. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, everybody has their thing. Yes, my thing, I don't know. I just, for me, it's important to get a good night's sleep before, and if I can't, which often happens because I'm so excited yeah. Yeah. I have to have a nap uh, the day of the show otherwise I'll be exhausted mm -hmm. for the show which starts later and so I have to rest um, I don't like to eat too heavily before um, so you know I'll just eat a little pasta or a little sandwich warm up in the morning so the voice is already good to go rest warm up before the show and when you say warm up scales how does it how yeah, does an scales. opera singer warm up Scales. I usually like. do some weird stuff like like this, and kind of to see that the voice kind of can shoot out like that. Not really singing, just right. testing it. And and the front desk calls and yes. says, uh, "Is everything okay? <laughs> is everything fine?" Yeah. When you take a job, your criteria for taking a job uh, has to be artistic. I'm sure, financial reward. <laughs> yes. There's a few. There's a few things. Financial, obviously, um, but it's not the most important thing for me. Um, artistic, if it's a job that takes me to a place that I really want to go to, mm. that's Good way to travel. Great way to travel, mm -hmm. and sometimes there are places that I wouldn't travel otherwise. So that's important to me. Or if it's, a, if it's an important uh, exposure, uh, career-wise, that's something to think about. Of course, and would you like a recital down the road, if if not big, big opera, smaller, just you? I know you do some of it. 
I like doing recitals. Yeah, I kind of stopped doing it not because I wanted to, but it's just um, these days it's really hard. Once you get a career in, uh, on the opera stage, it's really hard to find time mm. and venues for a recital. Sure. How many languages do you speak? Well, I um, manage uh, obviously with Hebrew. That's my mother tongue, and then English. French and Italian and German, so I can manage. And do you have good connection with the parents? What's good? They're in Israel now. What's going on in Gaza? You, you keep in yes. close touch. Yes, it's it's an unfortunate situation at the moment. Mm. But uh, as it. somebody who's professional, you have to stay so focused, as you know. Yeah. So you just. I have to stay focused on what I do and hope that what I do um, brings some kind of good. Some kind of peace. Some kind of peace, yes. Wouldn't it be great? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're in rehearsal until January 24th, and Carmen runs through Feb 5. Yes. Right? Uh, Vancouver Opera, Queen Elizabeth Theatre. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Very nice to meet you. Renat Shaham. Coming up, she does not tinker in technology. She is one wired woman who knows about all things digital. Stay with us for a visit with wired woman, Lindsay Smith.